Hello, this is Josh, mate on the AJ Mirwald, bringing you another episode of Science and Sailing. Today, we're going to be looking at the interesting life cycle of an oyster. Oysters, like many invertebrates, have a much different life cycle than mammals like you or me. In humans, as with most mammals, babies are born and are cared for by parents for a long time before becoming adults that are able to survive on their own. After reaching adulthood, mammals are able to reproduce and have babies of their own and the life cycle starts all over again. Pretty simple, right? Well, for oysters, things are just a little bit more complicated. When an oyster is born, it does not look like what you would think of as an oyster. It is tiny, microscopic, and floats around in the water at the mercy of currents. What do we call creatures like this? Zooplankton. We have another video discussing zooplankton if you're interested. But this tiny, freshly hatched oyster is called a trochophore larva. If you look right here, you can see one. And it has little cilia, which are like finger-like appendages that it uses to move up and down in the water column, but cannot move against the current. From there, it will turn into a de-hinged larva. And after floating around for a few days, it'll develop into a veliger larva. At this stage, the oyster is floating around and trying to be close to its food source, which is phytoplankton. The oyster will continue to grow, and at this point, it begins to develop a foot or a pseudopod. You can look at this picture again. This appendage sticking out right here is that modified tongue that is used as a foot called a pseudopod. After a while, the oyster will start to hang out near the bottom of the bay and will eventually settle to the bottom. From the time the oyster hatched until the time it settled on the bottom is about two weeks. Once the oyster settles on the bottom, it uses its new fancy pseudopod to kind of feel its way around. Oysters don't have eyes, um, but they do have organs that can sense light and dark, which are called eye spots or photoreceptors but they can't detect any details. So you know how when you close your eyes, you can still kind of feel the light and you can sense shadows? That's kind of how an eye spot works. The oysters use their, photo, uh, their photoreceptors, their eye spots, and their pseudopods to find their new homes. Now, since they will be spending their entire rest of their lives attached to one spot, they have to find somewhere that they really like. Do you know what kind of surface an oyster would like to stick to? Do you think it would be muddy, sandy, rocky? Well, oysters prefer, prefer hard surfaces like rocks, but especially other shells like oyster shells. Um, in fact, if they were to land and get stuck in the sand, they could quickly get covered up, suffocate, and die. So they really wanna get out of that sand and stick to other shells. And that's why oysters form oyster reefs um, and they grow on top of each other and make habitats that are good for many other animals. Now, when an oyster finds a spot that it likes, it will glue itself firmly down to it and this becomes its permanent home. Because it can no longer move, the oyster is known as sessile, permanently attached. The oyster will grow a shell over top of its squishy body in order to protect it. At this stage, the oyster is called a spat. If you take a look at this adult oyster shell, at its back, you will see little baby oysters attached to it, spats. Now, once it's protected from above, if you look here, you'll see that it started to grow a shell underneath to protect its bottom side. And from there on out, it will grow both of those shells together. It takes an oyster about three years to reach a harvestable size, but it will start reproducing when it's about two years old. When it is ready to spawn, typically in the spring, it will wait for an environmental cue, um, a change in the environment like temperature, salinity, or plankton abundance. Once it receives this cue, 
it will release eggs or sperm into the water. Now oysters are what's known as sequential hermaphrodites. And that means that they can either be male or female, but not both at the same time. And they can change from male to female or vice versa during their lives. Pretty crazy, right? Now, once the eggs and sperm are released, the eggs are fertilized exteriorly in the water. And then they hatch into those little baby oysters that we spoke about earlier, starting the life cycle all over again. A female oyster can release five to eight billion or million, million eggs in a, at a time. So they can be very prolific. With that number of eggs, how are the oysters just not totally overtaking our waterways? Hmm. What challenges and benefits do you think this type of lifestyle presents? Let us know in the comment section below. This has been Josh with the AJ Meerwald bringing the Bayshore to you.